So this is a massive correlations matrix. The reason it's so big is because we have column and row for each of your 26 items. Uh, and actually I did the departmental average one, but then I, I also kept each of these items of the, the two my departmental, just in case you want to see. Um, you, of course, don't have to use them in your analysis unless you want to. And then I put one for years of service and one for each of the three subscales. So the only thing, and this is all non-parametric here, uh, you see the Kendall's towel, that means everything you see here is, is uh, non-parametric. So it accounts nicely for the ordinal data. So really, except for the subscales themselves, which could potentially be controversial because you're getting them by averaging ordinal items, um, everything else on here, for example, uh, um, correlation between years of service and refer patient to OT, uh, I forget what that whole item was about, uh, that would not be controversial at all, even by the purists on uh, ordinal, ordinal type data. Um, so this this is a nice safe correlation to anything in here you could use um, even if you decide to treat everything completely as ordinal. Um, it's a lot to sift through. So there's every cell, let's let's just pick kind of an arbitrary cell here. Uh, too sick and maybe mobilization is there's three different things we're looking at there. Um, let me magnify it a little bit. So first of all, we have the correlation coefficient. So this is like the non-parametric version of R. Remember, R goes from negative one to one. The strongest correlations are at negative one and one. Um, so 0.5 is probably medium correlation or so. Um, it's a positive correlation, meaning that the more the respondents tended to rate higher on that mobilization is harmful to their patients, um, the more they also tended to say that their patients were too sick for mobilization. The next number you see there is your p-value. So you kind of want the first one to be strong, whether it's positive or negative direction. By want, I mean significant result. The second number you want to be low in terms of finding a statistical significant result. And then um, you have your sample size. So how many different correlations were actually run here? Or how many different sorry, data points were run for the correlation? So you can flip through there. Um, you probably would look for two things. One, you would look for numbers that are really high. And when I say numbers, I mean the correlation coefficient. Here's a really high number. Uh, that just tells us this is not statistically significant at all. I'm saying for the correlation coefficient itself, you might flip through there. Um, you might try stuff like if you select a bunch, you could do something like this. Um, just highlight, I'm holding down control by the way. Uh, control lets me do multiple highlights. And then you could do conditional formatting and some kind of color scale. Uh, that might make it easier on your eye to let the, the strong correlations pop out. Remember the ones on the diagonal are meaningless. It just means every variable correlates perfectly with itself. That's not, not useful. But you're, you're looking for other, other strong correlations. That's one thing. The other thing you might do is, from a, your professional perspective, thinking about two variables that you think should correlate um, and then checking what the actual correlation is. So in that case, even if you do get, a, if, if, for example, if you think knowledge and uh, attitude should be very strongly correlated and you find out that the subscales are very, very weakly correlated, they're not, they're almost not correlated at all, um, that itself could be a finding. Why is it that the knowledge and attitude aren't related very much at all? So. One thing you're doing is just looking from a mathematical perspective. You're just looking for any of the really strong positive or negative correlations. The other thing you're coming from your nursing background perspective, where you think you should see, or you're interested to see whether or not there is a correlation between any specific items or the subscales or years of service, and then seeing what you actually uh, 
uh, find as a result that can be quite interesting. And it, it does just bear saying once more that we have to be a little careful for cherry picking due to random variation. Um, right now we're looking at almost 900 correlate, I guess half a repeat. So at least 400 correlations here, unique correlations. We're guaranteed to have plenty of them be below a significance of 0.05. Just by random chance alone, we would expect 20 or 30 of these to be below 0.05. Um, so here we have to be a little careful if, unless you call it an exploratory study where you're just peeking around for the data. The more you're using your nursing background to say there should be a correlation and you go after that, um, that could be more of an authentic result. Um, but if you're just looking at the numbers, that's good. It's good to find little patterns and trends, but just be aware that that is an exploratory way of doing this. And, and you should mention that in your results um, or in what you consider to be the threshold for a significant 